right, is everybody ready for some Star Wars Sunday? I know I'm ready. We're going to talk a little bit about Darth Revan. We're going to have some some lore here we're going to chat about um, and uh, just talk a little bit. We're not going to get too much into his uh, backstory per se after Kortor, uh, just because there there's a lot there we can probably get even a whole new episode on. Uh, we're just going to touch on some things with Darth Revan that a lot of you may not know about. So uh, get excited. Feel free to jump in and chat. As you can see right over my shoulder here. Deep Prime with the host. Appreciate it, brother. Uh, right over my shoulder there. Anything that happens in chat, you'll see it right there. So uh, if you got something to say as we go, we'll chat about it as we go. What time is it? It's prime time. So... We're going to just go ahead and jump right in here because this is some interesting stuff that I've always loved about Darth Revan that a lot of people don't really know. Um, so we're going to get into it. We're going to talk about it. So first, a little background for any of you guys that don't know who he is. Darth Revan, also known as the Jedi Crusader, Revan the Butcher, as some knew him, Darth Revan, and the Prodigal Knight. He's gone by quite a few titles. He's, he's gone through quite a few things in his life. Um, he was born on the Outer Rim Territory. At least most people think that's kind of where he was born. Um, he studied, and the, the big thing that was different about Revan is that he studied under multiple masters. He didn't do like many other Padawans uh, where he studied under just one. Like Obi-Wan Kenobi had Qui-Gon. That was his. You know, uh, Count Dooku had Yoda. Uh, no, Darth Revan or Revan um, studied under multiple masters and he wanted to kind of get a full circled grasp on the force and all of its elements. Good job indeed. Um, a lot of people know him through the Mandalorian Wars when he went and defeated the Mandalorians at Malachor 5. If you played the Star Wars game Kortor 1, then you know quite a bit about that story part of his story um, where he basically uh, defeats the Man Mandalorians. Uh, he kind of wanders off into deep space, comes back. He's a Darth. Um, and from there, he kind of just starts wrecking the Republic. Eventually he gets boarded by some Jedi on, on his ship, some Jedi boarding party. Bastila is one of them. Uh, they bust him up after his, uh, Apprentice Malik turns on him. So he's kind of cornered on every side. They mind wipe him. And, you know, you know the rest of the story with Kortor. Or at least you can look it up. Uh, so one bit that we're going to actually talk about is his mask. A lot of people don't know where he got his mask and why he wore his mask all the time. Why you never uh, seldomly saw him take off his mask. Uh, so we're going to actually get into that. And if you want to know where all this information is coming from, because I know my bro, Nate Johns, I was always like, where, where is this? Where's this info? This is actually in the dark horse comics of uh, Jedi star Wars, Jedi Knights of the old Republic. So there's actually a long comic book series on that, uh, that followed Revan and kind of what he did. Um, and a lot of the Mandalorians and a little bit more of the backstory of where everything went with Revan. So, um, kind of the history, just to kind of get us started before we get into his mask, is that we kind of saw him uh, early on when the skirmishes of the Mandalorian Wars were starting, and you see these Mandalorians <laughs> by battles. No, that's not why he wears it. I'll, I'll tell you, though. Um, so, there's the Mandalorian Wars that are going on, and the Mandalorians are taking over all these planets, and just busting up the Republic, and killing all these people and one of the leaders who answered to mandalore the ultimate who was like their highest of authority in the mandalorians he was the guy that was the dude right he was the dude well one of his aides or one of his guys that um kind of reported to him that was kind of like his next in command was a guy named cassius fett yes fett like boba fett so that's a pretty cool connection. You can kind of see him here. He's got the uh, the old school Mandalorian armor. Um, so he was basically an aide is what they said, or a, a, another layer of command um, 
to Mandalore the Ultimate, who's the, the head honcho of the Mandalorians during the Mandalorian Wars. And so this guy is a bad mofo. He, he is pretty awesome leader with the Mandalorians. Um, we don't know if he made it past the Mandalorian Wars. We think he probably died. We don't know for sure. Or at least I don't know for sure. So if any of you guys know, let me know. Um, but kind of where he comes into the story with Revan's mask is this battle of Cathar. You can kind of see it here. Um, and he's going and he's just wrecking shop, demolishing these people. And he's driving these Cathars out into the sea. And he's going to, he's basically going to just lay waste to them and completely wipe out the whole race of the Cathar. And so I'm just going to kind of read it here in the comic as you can see the strip here. And he says, as soon, and, and we soon saw why uh, Cassus Fett and a horde of his Mandalorians were driving them into the sea. So this is leading up to how Revan will eventually get his mask. So he's driving them out into the sea. No disintegration. No disintegration. Well, he did disintegrate this time. But uh, he's driving them out to the sea and butchering this entire race when a lone Mandalorian woman stands up to him and is like, no, this is not right. Uh, basically, you can see it from the strip here. She says, they're defeated. We don't have to do this. So she's standing up. She's saying, look, genocide, is a, it's just a little, it's a little too much for her. She just, she can't stomach that that much. And if you guys don't know about the Mandalorians in the Mar Mandalorian Wars, they're very much a warrior culture and they're very, very, uh, like stoic personalities where like basically an Uber clone, if you can think of an Uber clone. Um, so they're like, no, these people are completely dishonored. They deserve to die. This is what Fett's saying. And this lone Mandalorian woman's like, no, you don't, you don't, you don't have to go that far. So he gives her a chance. He's like, look, like you need to come over here and make your choice now, or you're just, we're going to treat you as our enemy. So she, she doesn't do it. So what he does is he turns all his ships and all his fire and just shoots her as well as the rest of the, rest of the people at Cathar and just wipes them out, wipes them out, kills her, wipes them all out. And so they're dead. They're dead. So now comes in the part where how did Revan get this helmet, right? Like there's her helmet. You can see it right there, right? So around 3973 BBY, uh, the mask is still on the shores on the outer rim planet of Cathar. And, you know, this woman's been dead. And the Mandalorians are attacking people all over the world. Well, ten years later, so here comes Revan. And he's coming up. And the reason why he's on the planet is he's trying to prove to the Jedi Council that they need to intervene. Because the Jedi Council was like, no, we're not. We shouldn't intervene. You know, that they didn't feel like they really should intervene in this. Even though they were destroying worlds and destroying peoples. Uh, Revan was just like, this is not right. This is not right. We need to stop it. And so he set out with a very good like intention, kind of like you would with uh, Darth Vader. He had a very good intention. He was like, no, this is not right. We need to stop this. So he's on the planet, and he's trying to discover uh, information about the genocide that took place from Fett when he ordered the guns on the rest of the uh, Cathar people and destroyed them and destroyed this Mandalorian woman that stood up against them. Well, he's standing on the beach, and some of the Jedi Council are there, and they're there to kind of tell him, like, hey, like, we don't give you this approval. We don't approve of you uh, setting out on this crusade. And this is where he gets one of his names, Je uh, the Jedi Crusader for Revan. Um, and so he's sitting on the beach, and all of a sudden, something kind of gleams at his feet. And you can kind of see it, and you can see from the comic book strip here. Oh, that's right, man. Uh, so this is this uh, this is history uh, a little bit before before Kortor. This is we're talking about his helmet here. Uh, so this this is this is pretty cool. So we're, this is the part here where he gets his helmet. So he he sees this helmet from that Mandalorian woman that stood up to uh, Cassius Vett, who we see one more time here, the Battle of Cathar, killed all the people. She stood up to him, said, "Don't do it." He said, "Oh, you're my enemy. We're killing you." So here he is 10 years later and he, and he has the helmet and he, and he picks up the helmet and when he picks it up, he gets this like force vision of what happened to her. And then he goes into this like dialogue and he says, 
you know, you can kind of see what she said and see what happened. And I'm just going to read it from you from the comic here, and then I'll show you another uh, picture. But uh, he said, they were beaten. You didn't have to do it. One of you knew, but you didn't listen. I don't know your name, but I take up your cause, and I will not remove this mask until there's justice. Until the Mandalorians have been defeated once and for all, so swears Revan. And that's where we get to see on this next clip <laughs> right here. You can kind of see when he picks it up and that's when he gets that uh, vision, when he picks it up and you can see in the comic there when he swears and he's like holding it up. He's like for justice, for all the people that have suffered through this genocide. He didn't care what the Jedi Council said because the Jedi Council was like, no, you're not going to do it. Revan didn't care. And he was like, no, we're going to do this. And so Revan takes um, a small faction of the Jedi who agree with him. And one year later, he is successful, defeats all the Mandalorians and ends the Mandalorian war. And then after that, that's where we see him and Malak, who is his, basically his apprentice or his best friend that he made in the Academy. Uh, you see them later on, uh, realize that, Hey, these Mandalorians weren't acting on their own. There were some like agents that were working far from away from a Sith empire. We won't get too far into that story. Cause that's man, that's just so much more. Um, but that's kind of how Revan got his mask and why he never removed it for him. It was, it was a thing of justice. Like I'm, I'm giving justice to this Mandalorian woman who was killed by uh, Cassus Fett which, you know, later on we know is from Django and Boba, like from that line. Um, and, and um, you know, he's like, I'm not going to remove it. So that kind of became his thing later on in the comics, which, again, if you're interested in all this, you can find this in the Dark Horse comics from Star Wars The Old Republic. You can go and read this. It's a really long series. It's got a lot of good story in there. Um, but as he, as he goes on, he kind of people begin to understand that it's kind of like a symbol for him because you forget like he's just a man under that mask. And so it becomes like this big symbol. Um, so from there, he kind of kept it, kept it on. And then even when you see him as Darth Revan, when he comes back from visiting the unknown regions of space, he still has a mask on. So he's still striving for justice to do justice for that Mandalorian woman that stood up and was like, don't do it. Um, so yeah, guys, that's, that's how Revan got his mask. And, uh, I thought that was pretty, pretty cool. So, uh, definitely read that, uh, cause this is all events before, you know, Revan became Darth Revan, you know, before he was betrayed by Malak and Bastila captured him and mind wiped him. And he went through all this stuff with Kortor. Um, so that's, that's really cool. Dude, he he is probably the coolest Jedi. I mean, there's some other cool ones in there, like Exar Kun and things like that in their stories. But Revan, like, he suffered so much. Like, he was a good guy. He started out trying to be, like, good. He fought the Mandalorians. It was the only, only Jedi that could do it. No other Jedi was as tactful as he was. Didn't have the Force abilities that he did for uh, just the way he built relationships, the way he influenced others. Um, and then he goes, <laughs> I want to learn the ways of the force and become a Jedi. Like my yeah. Father. Some great stories, man. And I'm, you know what? I'm really hoping that they will actually make that into a movie. I know we're learning. Uh, there's at least some hints that the TV series may be taking part on the Mandalorian homeworld. So maybe we'll get to see some old Republic, man. We get to see some Mandalorians. I mean, that would be, and that's the series that the, the game of Thrones guys are working on. So I'd, hopefully we get to see some of that because that would be freaking cool to see some uh, viral blades and stuff like that. So I, the question you have, you just read, you need, you need Revan and some cannon. So here's a cool little thing a lot of people don't realize uh, is that he has been hinted as cannon. And that was as recent as The Last Jedi. So if you remember seeing Luke, he has a red crystal around his neck right? That red crystal. A lot of people thought before the movie and seeing the stuff that like, oh, that's Darth Vader's crystal. Like somehow he got it, saved it. It was sentimental to him because it was his father, whatever. Um, that's not the case because in the Star Wars 
like picture dictionary or one of the dictionary Star Wars official canon Star Wars like that has all the information about the the weapons and things like that. It goes and says it is a crystal from a fallen Jedi Crusader. There's only one Jedi that's been known as a Jedi Crusader, and that's Revan. He was the Jedi Crusader against the Mandalorians. So, somehow, Luke got that crystal and had Revan's crystal. This might explain why Luke was a little more kind of centered uh, when you see him in Last Jedi, where he's not just full-on Jedi, and he's not Sith. He's just kind of battling with that balance. Uh, that might be why. A lot of people said that uh, there were some scenes cut out where there was a Sith Force ghost uh, that Luke kind of interacts with. No, not Grey Jedi, man. Bro, th- th- apparently Grey Jedi is not going to be canon. Uh, I know a lot of people have pointed toward Grey Jedi, but really it's just... It's just a Jedi that's balanced, like it was intended to be, a very balanced Jedi. Uh, Think of someone like Mace Windu. Like, he's a very balanced Jedi, or Qui-Gon Jinn. And the Jedi Council at the time was an heir, and that's why Qui-Gon was never a master. Uh, So, anyway, so that's kind of the stuff we were talking about with Revan. Some cool stuff about him uh, that I thought you guys might enjoy as much as I did. So, I mean, what did you think? That's pretty cool that Fett goes all the way back, right? Like, all the way back. You can tie this guy from the Mandalorian Wars to Jango and Boba. I mean, he's just jacking people up. And he Revan gets a mask from a Mandalorian that stood up to him and knew what was right or wrong. Like, that, that to me is... That's just... Oh, that's so cool, man. I love that Star Wars history. Um, So that's about it for what I had for the lore for Revan. Now what we do... So much knowledge, right? Like I was talking to my wife. We went and got some like dinner tonight. Um, and we were talking about Star Wars. And she's like, how do you know this stuff? I was like, I'm just, I love Star Wars. <laughs> it's sad that it's not canon because of Disney. Yeah. So I'm thinking with uh, Dave Filoni doing more of the Clone Wars, um, there's hints. I mean, Bane's considered canon. And he's in the Clone Wars because the Clone Wars is considered canon and Bane's in the Clone Wars, um, Darth Bane. And since he's in there, well, Darth Bane actually got his rule of two from Revan because he found some holocrons from Revan and saw his teachings and kind of how he was and was like, all right, we need to do this then because you see what happens in the Sith Empire when there's more. You just kind of infight, things like that. Um, So I, I, bro, I think that he eventually will be canon. I think Dave Filoni are the guys that are, that are doing the uh, TV series from Game of Thrones. I think he's going to get in there somehow because he's just too good of a character not to use. And Kortor was just too good not to use that, man. So, so yeah, guys, that's the, do y'all have any thoughts before we throw it into uh, some Star Wars Battlefront?